let's go. I know you guys obviously came out early in the game last week trying to establish the run. It seemed like it still wasn't clicking. Uh, just review the tape. What do you think you guys need to do to change, turn it around moving forward? Uh, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Run game. Yeah. Early in the game against yeah. the Panthers, it wasn't clicking. I know in the second half you had to get away from it because of the, the way the game went. Sure. Uh, what do you think is, is still kind of missing in the run game? Well, it's like anything. Um, I think we got to take the execution from practice. We got to apply it to the field. And I think the execution has gotten better in practice each and every game. I think, and honestly, in <laughs> all, all relative, right? But I felt like the execution up front was a lot better this past week than it had been. So I think that part of it's getting better. Um, and then it, it all tying together. Everything has to flow together. I think when you see like the offenses start to roll and kind of what like that second half of the Ravens was is is when it all, all the pieces are kind of flowing together and the execution, you convert third downs. I think the one thing that was improved was it wasn't thirds and third and longs like it, like it had been. And I think that part of it is a testament to improving that run game. So, you know, we just got to keep we got to keep sawing wood and then improve the execution on the practice field, and then we'll take that thing to the game field. As you evaluated last week, did you did you think there was times where I mean everybody knew you you guys wanted to establish a run? That's what's talked about so much. Was there times maybe you forced it when it didn't need to be forced? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it, I don't think the word is forced. I think it's important to establish the run. I think you know. I don't think we put ourselves in any unadvantageous positions to run. I don't think that. Um, I think we got to do a better job coaching it, and we got to do a better. The players got to do a better job executing, and that's as simple as an answer as I can get. But it really is. I think that's simple. We just got to do, uh, you know, have greater attention to detail. And we will. Luke Zeke, Zeus last year, excuse me, when he took over, was one of the best backs in the NFL. So when you see <clears throat> three games in, still trying to adjust, how much of it is just still learning a new scheme? Maybe having to change a little bit to his strengths. Where's the balance there? Well, any any player that you have on your team, you want to always do things that help them be the best that they're capable of doing, capable of being. And then you want to make sure you're taking advantage of whatever the defense is giving you too, right? So you always want to balance those things out. And it's not just Z; it's the whole group, right? We we you know we talk about it in our room all the time. It's eleven as one. Every person has a part in the run game. Uh, including the quarterback, making sure that we're in the right look, making sure everyone's hitting their aiming points the way they're supposed to. And when that clicks, it all feels and looks right, and, and, and that's what we're all we're all hunting. It's not one particular person. Uh, it's not one particular unit. When you're running the football, it's 11 as one and always will be. Antonio's uh, kind of hinted that there would be some changes this week. He said we'd have to wait and see. Uh, not asking for any specifics, but are we at the point of the season where things are still evolving offensively to where you're trying to get to that point? where it yeah, They're 100% are, right? I mean, it's the beginning of a – of a of a new season of a new regime and a new st new system and we're you know only three games into this thing you got horns you got to hit deal with right on signer uh, no that, that's part of the growth man it, this is uh, if it was uh, everyone be able to do it if it was all easy right and I think that's part of the the challenge that we have here we know we got the right people in the building we got the right coaches we got the right players it's just going to continue to get better each and every week and I know last week didn't look and feel the way we anybody wanted it to right we we're all on and the same page there. But we, we feel like we're getting better. We feel like we had a really good day of practice yesterday, and we're excited to get back out there and get another crack at it today. Following up on your last answer, you talked about execution and everything. I asked AP yesterday about third downs. If it's third and five, throw in three. And he said, you're not drawing those plays up. That's execution. So, Luke, how do you fix it? Is it simply telling guys you got to get down the field? Is it – I mean, how do you – and I know you're not going to give yeah. the state secrets, but how do you fix it when it is execution? No, I, I think – to answer the execution question, it goes back to what you already asked before, right? It's about giving guys opportunities to go have success. It's making sure everybody's on the same page, and then it's going out and practicing and gaining that confidence, and then taking it and applying it to the practice to the game field. And you know, I think everybody in this building sees it every single day, getting better and better. And I think we're excited, and the guys are excited. Uh, the brotherhood in that room is really strong, so we're we're, we're leaning on that. And it's going to keep continuing to get better, and we're excited for it. Look, a bit of a deja vu for you, I'm not sure, but, you know, when DJ Glaze has to go in on that third play to kind of replace there, you know, going from what you saw in training camp to that moment, you know, what do you think is the improvements that DJ made? And also, how do you think he did? I thought he did a great job. I mean, for a young guy, again, we're fortunate. You know, Jackson went in there, too, and, and as a young guy, and you got Brock. You got a lot of young guys that are going in there that are confident in doing what they're doing. So, uh, you know they're prepared, and, and and then the second part of it's not too big for them. You know I think that's the cool the, the poise and composure that those young guys are shown are really cool, and I think it's uh, we're looking forward to continue to grow all that stuff for all those guys. But 
speaking on DJ particularly, I thought, you know, just to be able to go in there and handle that situation on the whim like he did uh, and play as much as he had to play and, you know, have the whole game plan at his hands. It's not like we just said, hey, this is your series and you got these plays and you're good, right? So he had to handle it all and he did, he did a really nice job. You watched the film of the game on Sunday. What are your takeaways from the offense? What's the next step for, for Gardner? Yeah, like I said, I think – in the first half, uh, you know, it's one of those ones where the game went the way it went, so it felt wor worse than it was. You watched the film and, and you felt a little bit better about that way, the way the first half came. we got to continue to get better in the run game. We know that. These two, three-yard runs, they need to turn into seven, eight-yard runs. And we know that. We're capable of it. We know that it's right there. And I think uh, as, as far as evaluating the second half, you know, when you're in that catch-up mode, it turns the game a little bit differently. So now you're kind of like not in the normal football anymore. So we've had too much practice at that. We're ready to get this thing out in front of it and, you know, to, you know, control the clock, whether that's run, whether that's completions, and then Gardner's a big part of that. We put a lot on his plate. He can handle all that, right, whether it's the run, uh, run checks, run to pass, pass to run, all that stuff that he does. He does a really good job with all of it. And then, you know, the consistency's been there. You know, he's completing the football the way we're asking to. We just got to, you know, nip, the, nip uh, those little turnovers in the butt. If he has those, gets rid of those one or two plays a game, I think he's playing pretty strong football. Luke, uh, you know, Antonio, after the, the loss against Carolina, said coaches will probably uh, have to coach the players a little tougher, and players will have to be receptive to that tougher coaching. Has there been a shift this week in preparation in that sense, and how do you go about that? I think, you know, as every coach does, right, whenever things don't go the way you want to, you want to make sure you, you look yourself in the mirror first, and I think that's all that is a reflection of. You're making sure you're dotting all your I's, you're crossing all your T's, but these guys know we're going to be who we are. We're consistent every day. We bring the energy. We're, we're the same person every single day. We're there for these guys, and we always will be. Um, I think that, you know, those – we make sure we're all, you know, you don't want to just keep doing what you're doing. You want to make sure you're looking in the mirror and make sure you're really, you're, you're uh, feeling really good about what you do. And maybe there is something here or there that you can kind of tweak and make it better. And we always do that. What have you seen from the Cleveland defense? Obviously, a lot of talent on that side, and they've got, you know, a guy like Miles Garrett out there. But status, I guess, questionable. Do you? as if he's just going to be at full strength? Is there things you can do with or without him on the field? I mean, even if he's not full strength, he's still the best player in the league. You know what I mean? This guy's unbelievable. And then you had Zadarius on the other side of it that uh, does what he does. You take Coach Schwartz, scheme, all that stuff. They, they got a really good defense. They, they have had – uh, these last, you know, last year we got to play against them too, and uh, you know, it's a good, solid group that they pose a lot of challenges. We're excited for the challenge. I think this is going to be a really good benchmark for us going against a really good defense, and we're excited for that that opportunity. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, never fun going against the best in the league. Unfortunately, we get to practice against one every single day too. Clearly, nobody wanted you to start one and two in this building. But how much do you have to, especially with young players? Hey, press, don't press the panic button. There's 14 games left. <laughs> How much do you have to instill that sometimes? In yeah, they've never even played 14, right? And right. they've already played three. Uh, yeah, I think that that's all. That's a huge part of this. This 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 uh, the league that we're in is that way. Everybody, you know, every week you're the best, and then the very next week you're the worst, and that's the reality of the the society that we live in. And that's. We signed up for it. We're all good with that. But the, to walk into a building as a young guy, that's a new perspective. And I think um, it's about coming to work every day and getting better. And we, 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 you know, we do our best to make sure we're focusing on the process and not necessarily that, that, that outcome because we know that if we got the process right, then it will turn into a bunch of wins in a row. And that's what we're looking for. We're not looking to just make it perfect right now. We want to make this thing sustainable, and we're on that right track. Look, the offensive line has struggled this season. Uh, AP has mentioned it before. I'm curious as to how their struggles impact your play calling. Well, you know, like I said, I think that they've gotten better each and every week, and I think the the, the camaraderie part of it, the playing next to the same guy, is going to make it a, a, a big impact on being able to be more consistent on a, on a, on a game to game basis. Anytime you, you're playing, uh, you know, different people in different spots, and every game it's different, or every whatever series it might be different. That's a difficult task. I think the, the brotherhood, the 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 communication that you have to have up front, and the kind of the unspoken language that when you know you see something and you're able to react to it, that's how the that's how lines become elite. And so I think just playing together, uh, practicing together, playing together, this, this group's the right group. And I think we have a really good guy, uh, set of guys that are going to just continue to get better and better. JPJ played well, AP said yesterday, and said he earned more. What, what do you, to be able to have two rookies on that line performing at the level they are, how much of a blessing is that as a coach, especially when you look at depth in this league? 
Yeah, no, I think it's a testament to, to Coach Krager, Coach Philbin, those guys doing a really good job to get those guys mentally prepared for it because it's not an easy task, right? The offensive line is, is a beast in this league, especially when you have the best position in the game is the defensive line right now, right? And you have to, to, to be able to respond to all that stuff is really cool. And uh, the composure of those two young guys is a testament to them and, and their preparation, uh, both bef you know before they got here and while they've been here. But I think the coolest part about them is their play style. I think when you see the way they're finishing, the way that they're uh, running off the rock, like all that stuff is really cool to see. And it's just, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be able to lean on them more and more as the season goes along. The national narrative on like a lot of the you know talk shows this week is offense is down, defense is so far ahead. What does offense have to do to catch up? Have you seen that? You, is there a trend that you've noticed or anything that could explain it? Um, I can't honestly say that I've looked enough around the league. Um, to, to say that's true or not true or whatever, I think it's um, a general statement for what we were just talking about. When you have a, a new group of guys playing together that have never played together, it takes a little time. And if that's the case, whether it's a, it's a system or whether it's an offensive line or a quarterback or whatever, I think that stuff does take time. I, I just reflect on my past experiences, and that's always been the case. We, I, you know, we had the best player in the league in 19 in, in Green Bay, right? But our offense wasn't wasn't very good. We had, we had Vontae. He had two of the best players in the league, but it just took time. And then you saw in 20, it turned into the best offense in the league. And so that stuff takes time. As long as your processes are right, as long as you're giving yourself an opportunity to go be successful in every single play, you got to continue with that, believe in that, and, and we do that here. Thanks. Thanks, guys.